Hey guys, um, back here for the weekly live event, asking all your questions regarding real estate and um, finance, basically anything regarding real estate, finance, credit, taxes, I'll be one happy to answer your questions. So sorry I've been, uh, been as uh, available as I have been in the past. It's been a busy week on the nine unit project um, that I started. And I'm really trying to make sure that I can turn this thing around, make sure that uh, everything's on time. It's, uh, it's a lot, because originally we're gonna paint them all the same, put the insides all the same, you know. It makes it a lot easier for buying our supplies and everything. But doing nine units and their cottages and we're trying to make it more like this beach vibe now we're painting each one a different color and putting different things inside, which is causing a lot more work. So it's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of a lot more work. Hey, what's up, Winters? What's up, big body? Yeah, it's been a good week, guys. It's been a good week. Um. Yeah, let's. We're definitely gonna be making some money soon. So, uh, so right now, I'm um, actually. So, I, I, what I do, as you know, I buy a lot of properties in, in downtown uh, areas. And um, <laughs> no, I'm not growing out my mustache. No, uh, I just haven't been able to shave. I've been really busy. Literally from morning to night, I've been working on these projects, trying to get them going, trying to get wrap them up. So. Uh, I normally go to the gym every single day and I have not gone to the gym in like three days So it's been that busy and I usually go like religiously So, you know, you got to take care of your body too, not just your finances uh, We gonna connect sometime in the future on the up Yeah, yeah, why not? Uh, what's up Nata? What's up? Martin so, um, Kitchen, what's up? What's up, guys? Um, oh, Joey's here. So, uh, thanks for all the love, guys. And anyway, before we really get going, use, use the link below in your live event and invite your friends. Because obviously, the more your friends are educated, the more you guys are like together talking about business, the more everybody's gonna grow and they're gonna be able to you know, grow together financially. So it's really important that, um, that you guys do that because the people you surround yourself with do have an impact of what you choose to do, you know? So invite your friends, there's a link below and you know, we'll, we'll all be able to grow together. Yeah, the security guard is here. Can you talk about your first property? Yes, yes, okay. So that's the first, that was the first question. And yes, yeah, so my first property, I bought it when I was um, 19 and it was in Clearwater. If you know the area, it's right on the border of Dunedin. Uh, that, that property, it was a duplex. And it's a two bedroom, one bathroom on each side. And uh, I bought it for about 140, and I paid too much for it, and I put down 20 percent. And I renovated it a little bit, painted a little bit, put in some tile, and from there, I um, rented it out. There was some tenants that were already there, and obviously along the way, I was upgrading uh, the property, upgrading um, the rents, and then I took the money back out. The, the, pound, the down payment, I put down about $28,000. And about six months later, I went to another bank and they gave me back, they gave me a second loan on the property for 21000 So I spent 28000 to buy it, but I got back $21,000 of that money within like six months. So that was awesome. And at that time, right about that time, a few months later, I bought another duplex with some money from the other loan. So I was able to use my first property to buy the next property. 
And then a few months later again, I went and got another line of credit, a second loan on the new duplex, and took out like 40 something thousand dollars, yeah. So I have a question for you. Um, so when you're a first time home buyer, you have the option to get an FHA loan, correct? Yeah. And that you can only, you, can, you have the option of putting down 3.5. Yes. Why did you decide to save up and put down 20% when you could have put down 3.5? One, to be honest, the fact, the idea that I, that I could not even buy a property at 19 was so awesome to me that I only knew of putting down 20%. Okay. I never knew of anything else. Two, would I have probably put down 20%? I was pretty conservative back then, so I probably would have because I would have avoided private mortgage insurance and I would have gotten a better interest rate. Sure. So thinking that way would have, is one thing. If I was going to say go back in time and redo it, I would say even if you had the cash, save the cash, only put down 3.5% so you can use your cash for more deals. I'd probably say that. Um, Big Body says, how do, you weather, how do weather conditions affect your projects? How much of a difference does bad weather make? A huge difference because we were going to change the roof and that roof project got pushed down like a week and a half. So that held up the project. And the rain kept us from painting the buildings. Uh, it took it longer. And also, I was changing the fascia, and the guys can't rip out the fascia while it's raining. Because one, the water makes it harder. And two, it's raining on them while they're doing it, so they can't do that. So then what we try to do is redirect people to the inside of the project. So now, instead of they're doing outside work, now they're doing inside work. Ripping up the drywall, the floors, the carpets, the cabinets. They're making all those changes. So then it's a little bit, um, it's a little different. It's a little easier uh, to manage the project. So, but if you don't have any inside work, it kind of sucks. What's up, Larry? What's up, guys? Oh, looks I'm like... 21, and I want to buy my first rental duplex in the next few months. Awesome, awesome. Um, so... Definitely, if there's a question you have, ask me the question because I don't want to spend like the whole hour trying to explain to you a part that you don't need to know. So if you have a question, let me know. Larry Gwynn, what research slash training course would you recommend to get started in property investments? Mm -hmm. I would, one, definitely look into reading the book uh, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It gives you a good idea about investing. Two, watch all my videos because it definitely gives you a lot of education because you need to build a really good foundation. So just reading one book or watching one video is not going to do everything for you. So you need to watch all my videos on here on YouTube. Next, I would say uh, we do offer one-on-ones if you want to make sure that you're getting 100% customized attention. So you could do that. And we are coming out with a course to educate on what is it going to take for you to qualify for your first loan, how to save up for money, um, and a lot of little tips and hacks on getting your money, investing your money a little bit, saving it up, and qualifying for your loan. Because a lot of times people get messed up because they do not qualify for the loan. What's up, guys? All the new people who just joined. Big Body CZ3. Pascal, I heard a rumor saying you're going to release a course. Is this true? I just... Yeah, yeah it is true. That is true. When's it coming out? Um, all right. So, obviously, I'm running like four companies right now. Uh, and I'm not joking. I'm legit. I have an insurance company. I have an accounting firm. Uh, all of them specialize in real estate. I have the rental business. I have the Airbnb business I'm opening up. And I have the flipping business. So, um, a lot. And then uh, uh, some people that I know, general contractors and AC guys, contact me today and they're talking about they want to open a restoration company. Um, so they want me to be a partner in the company, uh, to be the numbers guy. So uh, I said, yeah, I'm interested. We'll talk more. Just give me some more information about it. So we're looking to open a restoration company. Um, and we're also going to be doing like the Amazon drop shipping. That's another company we're looking to do too. So um, I'm one of those serial entrepreneurs. I'm the numbers guy. So I can run numbers on any business, chop it up. You know, and, and figure out how it works, what, the, what it, makes, it takes to function. So uh, I already do a lot of that consulting type of work for my clients that uh, are part of my accounting firm. And 
it's easy for me to do it for myself or anybody else, any other company I open. One of my hardest tr struggles and where you guys are gonna, to get from like here to like here, we'll say, it isn't gonna be hard for you guys because a lot of that you can put in your own time, your own effort, your own energy, and you can make it happen and get a lot of success for it. But once you go from this level here to like this level here, you, it's harder because you don't have hours in the day. You literally have no more time left, so you need to start partnering with people, and you know the two together will be able to get a four result instead of you think two two like okay what's a big deal? Well, you're gonna bring you're gonna do twice as much than if you were on your own. So it's worth getting a partner at that point, but the right one. As Taurus ninety eight said, can I buy a property with a Taurus visa? Yes, you can buy a property with a Taurus visa. Um, the loans are higher interest rates at that point. Uh, if you DM us, we can probably help you out with getting that type of loan. Um, it is doable. But again, if you don't have a visa or you have a visa and you have to, sh you have to be a stronger buyer, buyer for you to get the loan. Like there has to be a good reason. Like if you're telling me I'm a tourist visa and I make absolutely no money and I have no job and I have nothing to offer, then they're not going to give you the loan because that's a very sketchy loan. Um, but if you're saying, hey, I have good money in the country I'm from, then an, an investor and a private investor will front the money for the rest of the property, you know? Cool. Larry Gwen, good suggestion on the book. Thank you. Glad we could help. Larry Gwen, I'm interested in the one on one. DM? Yeah, DM. Just, a, just okay, so let me explain what the, what the one on ones do. I'm going to teach a lot of stuff. Right, and I, if you watch my videos, everyone says I showed you guys way more than anybody else does, and they're charging crazy money. My accounting clients come to me for consulting to how do I open a business, how do I um, buy a home, how do I do anything, right? And they pay me by the hour for that service. So, what I'm doing is that same price that they pay me, if you guys want that one on one, I'll charge you the same price. The reason. When you're trying to get a loan, they have so many government loops in the loan that you can make a mistake and miss something. And unless I literally look what I'm going to do on a one-on-one, -on -one, I'm actually going to ask for your bank statement. I'm going to look through your bank statement. I'm going to look at your credit report. I'm going to look at your um, tax returns. I'm going to talk to you about what you're doing, why are you doing it, the psychology of how you're handling your finances. I'm going to talk about what type, what type of deals are you looking at and why. And I'm going to go through all those different sections and analyze them and try to correct you on what you're doing. And probably if you're not running an optimal play to be like, I see what you're thinking here, but it's not going to work because you don't have your credit right or you don't have your finances right and you don't have something, your tax returns right. And at that point, I'm going to actually tell you how to fix it. So you're going to find the problem before you get into a contract and you go and try to buy it and it, it gets canceled. Or you lose the deal because you don't have the, the stuff set up. So that is what you get from the one-on-one. -on -one. Like the actual – because I, I, you obviously can't – you're not going to tell me – you're not going to tell everyone your private info on this live event. And again, during the day, I'm meeting with clients, so I don't have any free time. Bill Hatch 22 said, hello, should I get my real estate license first if I want to start flipping homes or is that not required? It's not required at all. You, you, your real estate license will do zero – for flipping homes. Simple enough. Uh, I think there was another. What's up, Spartan oh, Parker? I got it. Big Body CZ3. What type of investor are you? Would you consider yourself more conservative or more risky? Some people would consider me risky. Some people would consider me conservative. I am now more con more risky than. Some people are, but I'm not extremely risky. I'm not extremely risky yet. Okay. I'm holding back how risky I can, I'm being right now because I feel the market's going to go down in a year or two. I bought the nine-unit property because I felt, even though it was a lot of money, I felt like that area is a strong area and is going to be good no matter what. So... I feel that the market's going to go down more, so I'm preparing so I can buy a lot and get aggressive when everyone's scared and pulling back. 
What's up, Nico? Alrighty, I have a question for you. So we posted, we posted a picture today about leverage, and on real estate, how like leverage your money. So the houses, uh, properties worth a hundred thousand, you put down twenty, the loan, the loans for eighty thousand. Like, how exactly do you leverage your money, and like, what does it actually mean? Because I heard some people ask you that. So leverage means multiplying it, right? Leveraging your money, so you're multiplying your money. Normally, when you're doing an investment deal, you'll have to put down 20%, right? So that means for every dollar you put down, you get a leverage of $5 total, your dollar plus four from the bank. So if you put down 20,000, you're gonna leverage a total of $100,000 on a property, so you have an $80,000 loan. By doing that, you can make more money because if you buy the deal right, and you buy a property and you have a loan of say 4% interest. If that property, you're paying 4% on this 80 and you're paying no interest on this 20,000. But if property values go up 7%, you made a full 7% on your 20% and then you made 7%, you made a difference, remember your interest is what, four? Your, your appreciation is seven? You made 3% on that loan. Right over that eighty, that's a lot of money. So in reality, you're uh, you're you're leveraging. Meaning this: if you only had twenty thousand and the twenty thousand is only gonna make seven percent, you're only making seven percent on that twenty thousand. But because you got a loan and you're using leverage, you're getting roughly for that twenty thousand almost nineteen percent because you're using leverage. You're using the bank's money and paying four percent, and you're gaining the difference from the seven to four, which is the 3%, you're gaining that. So you're making like 20%, 19% um, on that by using a loan. So you're leveraging your money um, and you're making a lot more money that way. So up, Bassett? Uh, yes, I am also on YouTube. Um, and I do have a Facebook, Mogul and Magnates. We're going to be doing a um, podcast soon because we um, have uh, connections. Like one of the one of the guys I know is, is the does like eight hundred home listings a month. Another guy I know is one of the top hard money lenders in the country. So I know a lot of different people that have a lot of great knowledge that I want to bring to you guys. So we're going to be doing a podcast and a vlog on the YouTube station. So the YouTube station, what's great about it is. We have these lives. We have uh, Lords, and, um, Lords of Land. We're gonna have mobile and magnates on there. So we're gonna have multiple different types of playlists in there that all revolve around real estate and finance. So you can learn a lot of different things in one spot. What's up, Viva? All right. So again, whatever questions you guys have regarding real estate, credit, finance, business, any of those options. Just feel free to ask, I'll answer them. Again, normally, you know, I charge like $200 an hour. So any questions you have, ask now, you're getting it for free. Um, on the podcast, an Apple, Apple podcast? Uh, I believe so, it's gonna be an Apple podcast and probably also gonna be on Spotify and a couple of other um, podcast uh, places. What's up, Mark? Marky Mark. So, um, so yeah, the, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to ask the questions now. So the question is, what should, be, what should we do to prepare for the upcoming market dip? One, educate yourself is big. Because if you want to educate yourself on real estate or the stock market, educate yourself on what assets you're looking to buy. You know what is out there. You know what it's worth. You know what it's worth compared to other items. Then when the market tanks, you're not wondering what it's worth. You know, hey, all these houses in this neighborhood always go for 250. And now I just found one because the market's low and it's a little beat up. I found this one for like 150, 175. And then when you buy it, you can fix it up over the years as you're renting it and know when the market goes back up, your 
remember this part. You bought it for 150, you probably only put down, say, 30,000 on it. You're now, when it's back up to 250, you're making $100,000, plus you're getting your $30,000 back, so you get 130. That's what's leveraging your money. You know, you, got, you have to use the loan to be able to buy the property from our previous question, what's leverage? Um, and, but education in your, what you're doing, right? You know, you're not gonna go be a dentist overnight. You're gonna spend time, you're gonna educate, you know what you're doing so you don't screw up. This is no different. You're spending $30,000, you're getting a loan for $120,000, and it's not hard if you educate yourself. So spend nights, spend three hours every night, right? This should be, if you're gonna be spending this type of money and you wanna make crazy money, you can do it, it's not hard, like I did it. I didn't have anything special that you guys don't have that can't, that can, you, you know, you can do it too, but you, what I would say, what my big success has been is studying the market. Extreme optimism. Very optimistic, despite how, how how bad things got. I was very optimistic that I knew things were gonna get better. I had faith. I was like, all right, God's gonna help me. I'm gonna keep moving forward. I know I can't do this. I would say this all the time, but I know, God, you can do this, so like, help me, you know? Uh, and I know you will, and I went out there in faith like that. So, but you gotta pursue. And again, my first few deals, I'll tell you, they were not that good, right? It's not like I hit it out the park. They were not that good, but being faithful and keep moving, I was able to, um, I was able to, you know, keep moving, buying more deals, and eventually, sorry guys, eventually get better and better and better at these deals. So next question we have here is, what are common mistakes people make when trying to get into real estate? Um, one of the big mistakes people make is they Overthink it. Overthink it. Yes, study. Spend time. Study, study, study. They are spending too much time learning about wholesaling, learning about flipping, learning about this and this and this, and understanding the concept, right? But they're not spending the time of researching markets and what's a good price for that neighborhood. Like, that is more important than anything. Because if you find out there's a good deal there, what's the most important thing is, how do I get this deal? Or one, knowing it's a good deal. Once you know it's a good deal, you can go back and you've made a couple of buddies in the real estate game, be like, this is a good deal. How can I get this? And that mentor is gonna be able to help you. That buddy is gonna be able to help you. Now, let's just say you can't buy it yourself. They're gonna say, you know what? Sell me the deal and I'll give you 10K. I'll give you 5K. At least you know you are able to find a good deal. That is key. That is more important than anything, finding a good deal. And you will never know it's a good deal if you're not studying your market and understanding what prices go for in the different conditions. So great question. All right. What's up, Charles? What's up, Alan? Mucha, what's up? Arturo, what's up? Hey, Diego joined us. All right. So, how long have I been working for? Definitely. I mean, that's the only language I know. The uh, comment was, um, now you're speaking uh, my language, dollar signs. And I was like, that's, numbers are the, are the only language I know. Uh, right, next question. Salam Bascal. What's up, Diego? Uh, all right. Stores98 says, I'm from Colombia. I want to become a real estate investor in the United States. How can I get into real estate license or residence? All right, well, there's multiple ways you can invest in America. One, you can put your, send your money in and invest with an investment group, right? You don't have to be a real estate agent or anything else. To buy property in America is really cool. So, um, 
you can invest, probably the easiest way for you is to buy an investment group. Because if you try to buy it by yourself, it would require you way too much money. Or if you had, say, $100,000, you can send it in with a group, they'll invest it for you. But if you have $100,000 and you're trying to buy something that's like two or 300,000, you'll be able to do it, but the kind of profit you're gonna make is probably not worth it after you pay the real estate property management fees and all those other fees. So it's probably not worth it for you in the, the long run, um, unless you're gonna be able to put in like, you know, $200,000, and then um, at that point, then you'll be able to get better money. I don't sign tapes, but I just got really out here. We working. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, not literally ever since I bought this nine unit, I was busy before that. But when I saw that deal, I was like, I don't care how busy I am. I'm going to put in more work. Valley Auto. What do you think about buying a land and sit on it for years? It's not my style. Not my style. I'll say this. I buy real estate one because I secure my, my asset. And normally I buy key, key locations. So my money is still good, right? I get loans to help leverage my money. It's harder to get land loans, and especially many of them. Three, it's for cash flow. I'm holding this property. This is how I think of it when I buy a property. I'm really buying the land. The building above it doesn't mean that much to me. It means something because I need to rent it and it needs to not you know, get the dilapidated. But in reality, I'm buying the land. So I'm paying a little bit extra because of the building on there, which is fine. And then I'm going and I'm putting tenants in there and they're paying me money to pay the, the loan that I bought the land for, right? If you just buy land alone, no one's paying you money to use it. It's very rare that they're gonna pay you money just to sit on the land. It can happen, but it's rare. So now you're paying money out of your own pocket on this property where you're putting money into the property and you're hoping it appreciates faster than the interest you're paying and faster than where else you could have put the money. So your money has to move faster twice. Faster than interest it's, it's, it's paying and faster than wherever else you could have put the money. So it would be easier for you. To, that doesn't, that's usually, the numbers don't usually work out. They really usually don't work out. So um, it's usually better to buy a property or a, a building with land and then make money that way. Because uh, then now you're, you're paying the loan with the rent, okay? So then it's easier to, to, to win. Evo said, do inflation affect on real estate investors? Inflation does affect it. And, what, and it's a good factor for, it's a positive thing for real estate investors because we have, a, we, has a, we have an, it's a positive thing for real estate investors. One, inflation causes all materials to go up in value. Because it go, makes it go up in value, to build the like building is gonna be a lot more money. And because of that reason, your building is worth more because it's now replacement costs are too high. Inflation basically devaluates money. So it costs, makes more, you have to use more money to buy something. So that's when your, prop, your, your property value usually is a good hedge against inflation. So it's a positive thing because Again, as I, as I mentioned, watch my other videos where I'm explaining the, uh, buying multiple rental properties or paying for a house cash. It's better that you, know, you own loans and you pay. Uh, it's, it's good that you have loans because inflation costs, makes the loans worth less and makes your property go up. So it's usually a very positive thing. So if you get, think the money, the government's gonna print more money and you think inflation is going to keep going up, you want to buy real estate. You want to buy assets. What's up, Pod Baba? Pod Baba, what do you think about pub subs versus subway? Very good question. The community needs to know. All right. Boar's Head pub subs? Good. But I don't know if you know about this, but there's a place called Holiday's Produce <laughs> on uh, Moog and Grand Boulevard. They sell the best subs with only made with boar, boar's head, premium bread, right? You need to check it out. Amazing, and you, need, you know what you need to get? You need to get their hot Cuban. Amazing. We don't like Subway. Arturo Huerta sent a request to be in your live video. Let's give it a shot. Arturo, right, I I've, hope I've you're never, still here. I've never done that before, Arturo, so I can't make I any promises. Arturo, I hope you're still here, brother. Let's see. 
All right, let's see what happens. So we'll see if he joins. What's up, Nani? What's up, Trium? What's up, Salmon? How did you start in real estate? So at um, I fell in love with the real estate when I was like fourteen. When I found out my uncle was renting or bought a condo and rented it to someone else. And I was like, wait a minute, I can buy something and someone pays me to borrow it and the bank will give me the money to buy it, 80% of the money. So I come up with just 20% of the money. The bank will give me 80% of the money. And then I rent it up to this other person and that person gives me money to pay the bank. I was like, I can own this with very little money. Because let me tell you back then when I was 14, I was flipping Pokemon cards and I wanted to keep them all, right? Catch them all, keep them all. I wanted to keep them all. And I bought, bought and sold video games and I wanted to keep all my video games. And I bought and sold comics and I wanted to keep them all. And you can't keep them all, right? You can't because you have to trade in your, 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 some of your, your worst cards for the better cards. So eventually you got to trade up and you have less of the stuff, but you usually have better value if you're doing good trades. So you end up having, can't keep it all. You need more and more cash. So when I found out I could buy something and someone's gonna give me money for 30 years to buy this thing and the person's gonna pay me rent and I'm gonna make extra money along the way so I can own it, they pay me rent, I'm paying the loan and I'm making money. I'm like, this is a crazy deal. And I found that on 14. So being the collector guy that I am and really into like collecting stuff, which I wanted to collect real estate, um, by 16, I saved up enough money to put a down payment on my first place. And um, my dad wouldn't co-sign. And this place was stupid cheap. It was like 1,200 square feet house for like 40,000 bucks. And I was like, I saved up the money. I'm ready to go, just co-sign for me, dad, and we'll buy it and we'll rent it out. And it would make crazy money because the rent was really good compared to buying it in the loan. I mean, I would have made like 400 bucks a month on a, and I basically made my money back in two years, which is a crazy good deal in, in the real estate game. But he didn't do it, it didn't happen, and I had to figure out how to do it basically when I was 19. Bracken J said, who has the best chicken sandwich, Chick-fil-A or Popeye's? Listen, Bracken, we didn't have a chance to eat the Popeye's chicken sandwich yet. We know it just released. We know this stop, hype. Stop, stop. I've eaten every single chicken sandwich. I eat every single chicken sandwich, the regular and the spicy. So let's, let's, not, let's not kid around here. <laughs> Chick-fil-A, hands down, oh my God. hands down, the best chicken sandwich. Hands down? Sandwich. I've had Popeye's. Don't question me on that. The best. And not just like taste good, but like actually quality food too. You know what? Do you want to, you want, you want to talk bad about Chick-fil-A uh, mac and cheese? I would never do that. You would not because it's amazing, right? That's very true. They, they make amazing food. I have not had a bad thing there. Except the one time I got food poisoned. Yeah, we'll ignore that. <laughs> we'll ignore that time. Pod Baba said we all know it's Chick-fil-A. Good guess, Pod Baba. No cap on that for sure. As for us, can I big... Can I begin in an investor group with 50000 You can be in an investor group for $50,000. Um, yes, you can be in an investment group for $50,000. Um, whatever investment group you're going to get into, like people send me DMs and they want to be part of my investment group. Um, and the same thing I tell them, I said, yes, you can start with as little as 50000 but I'll need to like interview you because we don't take money from people that need that money, right? There's, we don't. Real estate's long term. It's long term. Not like we don't want to take money from somebody and then they need it back in like two years. Like that's going to hurt you guys. We're not going to do that, right? We're, we're going to make sure if you have less than $100,000, we need to one, make sure that you do not need this money. That this is money that you won't need for back for five to 10 years. Because remember, when you put your money into a piece of real estate, you're going to make rent, right? You're going to make rent. You're going to make money. But you're not going to make $50,000. You're going to make 8%, right? You're going to make $4,000 a year on the money, which is, no, you're going to make more than that. 
Yeah, you're gonna make like um. Eight percent. Oh, this four. Okay, yeah. sorry. So to my point, you know, you'll make four percent, which eight 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 uh eight percent uh a dividend. That's really good, right? And then in five years or ten years, we'll sell the property, and then you'll get your fifty thousand back, plus maybe another thirty, forty, fifty thousand, or even more, depending how good the deal does. So you can. It's a great place, a great way to make money, but it is not short term. It is not short term at all, right? Like, it's because I was talking to other people, and they've known me for a long time, and they're like, "Wow, you've really blown up," and I'm like. What do you mean? They're like, oh, well, you have this house and you have these cars and you have all this stuff. And I'm like, you do know I was this rich a long time ago, right? Like, I was this rich yesterday. <laughs> I, I didn't just happen yesterday. <laughs> it's the fact that I didn't, all my money that I had was in real estate. My money was in it. So I had two options. I should sell it and buy shit, which then is stupid. Or I can just continue to grow, 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 where then my rent checks my rent checks got so big that I can buy all this extra stuff just through my rent checks. So like my house, my cars, my I8, like you saw my video about my I8. I, the, the, the rent pays for the I8. Like I don't gotta worry about paying it. The rent pays for that house. The rent pays for all this other stuff. So like whenever I say, oh, you know what? Like my, my right now, I wanna get a 458 Spider, And I'm like, so I want the Ferrari. I'm not gonna go, I can pay for it. I'm not gonna go pay for it. I said, okay, you want it? Go do 65 flips. Go add 65 apartments to your portfolio. And then that's only like 10% of it. So that means six, six apartments would pay for it. But no, I have to do 65. So it's so little, so tiny that no one could ever be like, oh, he effed up. He got a Ferrari and then he lost everything. You're like, no, no. I, I could buy 10 Ferraris and it'd be not a problem. What's up, Aram? What's up, GK? Great What's up, question. Papa? <laughs> George Carrier, that's a very derogatory eggplant. I mean, Alan, thank you. How long do you rent the property before you feel it's a good time to sell? Does the, mark, does the market dictate when to sell? Yes. So that's a great question. Well, I'm going to answer your, your second question first. The market does dictate when you, when you want it to sell, right? So because normally I would not have held a pro I held properties for like, 10, 12 years, okay? Some of them I would not have held that long. Some people told me, sell them. And I'll say this, I was like, okay. I bought the property for, I'll give you an example. I bought a property in Newport Ritchie. Bought a property in Newport Ritchie for 165,000. Obviously I put money down, I got a loan, blah, blah, blah. Then I went to the bank and they valued the property at like 300,000. So they gave me another loan for $120,000. So I bought it for 160, I put down like 40,000, and then went back to the bank and they gave me another 120,000 cash. And I took all that cash and I started buying more properties with it too. So I that until now I owe $224,000 on this building. I have five apartments in it, it's bringing me rent. I'm making money every month from the rent. The property market sinks. I now owe 240 and it's only worth like 150 because the market tanked in a way. Am I gonna sell it? No, I'm making money from rent and I owe more money. I have to pay money to sell this building. No, now it's break even. I owe 240, it's worth 240. I'm making money each month. Am I gonna sell it? No, there's no reason for me to sell. Now I'm, I'm making, I could sell maybe make 50,000. And I'm making um, twelve thousand a month, or twelve thousand a year. That's twenty five percent return. Plus, I'm paying down the mortgage. Should I sell it? Mm, it's getting there, where I could possibly sell it and do better. Now, could I make better cash flow than that? Probably not. But can I level up instead of and sell it, use this cash with other cash, and then go buy a ten unit or a twenty unit building? That's very likely highly likely I'm getting to the point where I'm probably going to do that. Um, and not only that, if I think the market value is not going to go up any more in that property, I will sell even though it's not the best cash decision for me to do and cash flow.
but it might be a very good decision because now I'm going to take this money and buy another property that's worth 300,000 or probably add another, add more money to it and buy a property that's worth 600,000. And this property worth 600,000, I think that has a lot of room to go up in value where this one that's at 300, it's probably going to go like this. And the money you make in real estate, like I mentioned before, there is cash plays where you're making a cash cow property, which sometimes usually does not go up. And if it does go up, it goes very little. And then there's properties that maybe make you a little bit less cash, but have a lot more room for appreciation. Your lion's share of the money you're going to make, the big, big money you're going to make, the stupid money is not from rent. The stupid money is you buy a property that's appreciating and the rents are going to appreciate and you're gonna make that crazy money there in the appreciation. So that's what's really key. How long do I usually hold a property? Between five to 10 years, sometimes shorter if I can really make a good flip on it. Baguettes all day. Always baguettes. How can I get my money long like you, Vasco? Stretch it out. That's true. Work it out. Hit the gym. Hey guys, do you work with hard money lenders? How can I find one if I get a good deal? DM me. I have the one of the top hard money lenders in the country. Um, depending on your like background, uh, we'll change the, the rates and terms. But either way, they're like stupid good compared to when I started. When I started, they were like 15%. Now you can get them as a newbie for like 12%. Uh, they wanted to put down like 30, 40%. Now you can get it hard money loan with like 10, 20% down and they fund the flip, the, the rental budget. It's easy. It's too easy for you guys now. You say $40,000 or a fraction of that? I don't. When did I talk I, about $40,000? I'm not sure what you're uh, talking about. You said $40,000 or a fraction. I don't remember what that's in reference to. So if you could please be more detailed. Arturo comes back with a request. We will try one more time for you, brother. Unable to join. See you later. What's up, Luke? Steve said, is buying a duplex or a triplex a good investment? I think so. But remember, not just owning a duplex. Duplex and triplex, you're going to buy it. You're going to make money even if you make a bad deal. Normally, right? But making sure you're paying the proper amount of money for it is really important. Don't overpay. You make your money in the buy. So as long as you're buying in a good area that's appreciating, you're not paying too much for it then yeah, you're gonna win on multiple, multiple fronts. My question, please, just need an answer. Oh, I sent it. I didn't answer his question? I am King Pod. Yeah. Oh, see, there is, thank you. Yep. You said um, when you sold your Pokemon cards, et cetera, you put down about 40,000 and you wanted your dad to buy the property with you. He's talking about the deal when you're 16, the one mm, you were looking at. Mm, okay. I never sold my Pokemon cards. I traded my Pokemon. Actually, I did sell some of them. I traded my Pokemon cards up, and then I did sell a couple of them for money. I still have a lot of them, so I'm looking for them to, to show you guys. Now, I, the deal that I wanted my dad to help me, the house, the full house, was selling for 42000 or 44000 The whole house. I only needed $8,000 down. And I had that saved at that time. I've been saving money for a long time. I've been flipping and hustling for a long time. So when Gary V says stuff like, I've been flipping and hustling since I was in elementary school, he's not lying. I did the same shit. I used to work at eight. I used to sweep hair at a barbershop down the street from my house, you know, saving money. I'd buy video games. I'd trade them. I'd trade pogs. You guys don't even know what a pog is, but I used to trade pogs. <laughs> so, um... So like a lot of that stuff, I used to trade up because again, I didn't have a lot of money. So I knew right away, if, it, if I could get some money some way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hustle to get it. So yeah, it was eight. I only needed $8,000 down. I didn't need any money from him. I needed the bank because you're not old enough and you don't have any income coming in from a job. You need a cosigner. Someone that has a job that says, yes, if that person stops paying, I will pay for it. So it's called a cosigner. So I was going to use my money to put it down, get a bank loan. He was going to co-sign so the bank gives me the rest of the money and then I was going to put a renter in there. That was a plan. Mm -hmm. She followed up with, oh, okay, so I wanted to put money down on a property. 
I put a fraction down and get a loan? Yes, that's how it works. Correct. Isn't it crazy? It's a great deal. Very correct. Yes, it's very correct. You're probably going to have a crazy follow-up question, which is a good one, not a bad crazy uh, follow-up question. So go ahead. You you probably blew your mind because it blew my mind. So you mentioned co-signing. You mentioned earlier, like a couple of lives ago, about the co-signing on somebody else's credit card to like pull their credit. Can you like repeat that again? So this is definitely different. The, the reason to do that on a credit card and the reason to do this on a, a bank loan is different. So I was teaching people how to get better credit fast, like the credit hack. So credit works like this. Every credit card you have, every car loan you have, everything you have is from the bank. And that goes, that history goes to the bank, from the bank to the credit bureaus. And at the credit bureaus, they will basically assess that information. And basically, if the bank says you paid on time, it's like a person saying something good about you. So if you have multiple credit cards, multiple home loans, multiple car loans, and they're all paid on time, all of them are going to say good things about you. Like, hey, this guy pays his bills on time. He's a good guy. You should trust him to, to, give, to take more loans. There is certain factors that, have, that are important as well, but I'm just going to keep it simple right now. So if you don't have any credit cards or any credit lines saying that, saying good stuff about you, what you can do is find someone that has a credit card that's been open for like 10 years. They barely use the card. They have a high credit limit and they owe nothing on it. Get yourself out as a co-owner. Then when the credit bureau gets reported next month, they'll show you as a co-owner. It's going to show that you had that card for 10 years, that you were paying on time all the time, and that you owe very little money on it. Boom, your credit score is going to go, it's going to skyrocket. It's going to go up a lot because now you have a credit card saying that you've been good for a long time. Someone's vouching, that card vouches for you. So that's a credit hack. Now, if that person messes up and starts jacking up that credit card, you also owe the money because you're a co-borrower, you're a co-owner. So you have to be careful who you're, who you're doing that hack with. So uh, you don't even need access for the card. You're just going to need the, 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 the part of being a co-owner. Cool. Nani followed up with, okay, cool. So how would you, how would someone go to pay back the loan payments or? Great question. So. What's up, Rebecca? Get... What? Double click. Cool. So when you get that loan, right? For example, the $40,000 property, I put down $8,000. The bank gives me the loan for the rest. The bank would give me, give, not me. The seller, the person that's selling the house wants 40000 I put up eight, the bank puts up 32000 All that money goes to the seller. Now, the bank says to me, he's like, okay, Pascal, I gave you $32,000. What you have to do is you have to pay me $200 a month for the next 30 years. So I pay the bank 200 bucks for the next 30 years. The bank says, you need to make sure you take care of this house. If anything breaks, you got to fix it. You got to pay insurance on the house. You got to pay the taxes on the house. And I'm like, okay, my, my mortgage is only 200 bucks a month. My taxes and insurance are another 100, 300 bucks a month. And if anything breaks, I'll fix it. And then I rent that house to someone else. That other person is going to pay me six to 700 bucks a month. So now I'm collecting 600 bucks, we'll say. After paying 200 for the mortgage, 50 for the taxes and 50 for the insurance, I keep 300 bucks. So in one year, I get $3,600 for my $8,000 investment. Now, you can't spend that money because one day the roof is going to go bad, the AC will go bad, stuff will go back, and you got to fix it. Because if you don't, then no one's going to rent from you and you're going to stop collecting rents. So you can't spend that money like it's yours. You got to keep putting that money back into the company, into the rental property, and just have it saved in a savings account in case something goes bad. Normally what I do is once I have enough money saved up again, I buy a second one, then a third, then a fourth, then a fifth. That way, if I have four or five, if one tenant stops paying rent, it's not like, oh man, I don't have any money coming in. I have four other people paying me rent. So I have more room to play in what's called vacancy. So then I have to worry about vacancy as much because I got enough money coming in. And after I have enough money saved, enough money in my uh, savings account in case stuff breaks, then eventually I, have a, I can start using a little bit of the money for myself. But normally you wanna wait like probably I'd say five years 
before you start spending money. You know, you want to keep reinvesting, reinvesting. Because again, you're not in it to make two, three hundred bucks a month. You're in it so you can be making three, four, five thousand dollars a month and living more comfortable. So, you know, give up that short term satisfaction for the long term. Great question. Thank you, Bonilla. She says nice info. Got another question. Fanana. This question is, so the only money you get from the renter is rent? Yes. The renter is paying you rent. And you, you tell them how much money you want to make. You can tell them it's $600, $700. Remember, they're only going to pay you as much as what? Market value. So you can't tell them I want 1000 Excuse me. You can't say I want $1,000 if everyone else is only paying 700 in the area. So, yes, you get paid that rent. And... You then pay the bills from that rent and you go from there. Hello, Ryan. So, yes, any question regarding rentals, um, credit, taxes, business, feel free to ask. So, earlier I was talking about the nine unit property in the Airbnb. Um, Renting property annually and doing Airbnb is, are really two different animals. They're very, they have a lot of similarities of renting. But when you're thinking about doing Airbnb, the things I would consider is that, one, when you're, doing, when you're a landlord, you don't have to pay for electric, water, sewer, garbage, cable, those items. When you're doing Airbnb, you have to pay for those monthly expenses. Also, you don't have to pay for furniture as a landlord, but in Airbnb, you have to buy furniture. As a landlord, when you're renting out like annually under a 12 month lease, you're getting about 90, 95% occupancy. In an Airbnb, the average is like 55%. So you gotta consider, yeah, a lot of people will say, oh, I'm making 200 bucks a night. But then when you multiply that out, that's what, 6000 in a month. That's at 100% occupancy. If it's only occupied 50% of the time, that's 3000 bucks. Minus off your normal rent that you would have received, minus off the water, sewer, garbage, electric cable, minus all those other extras that you spent. At the end of the day, you could be like, wow, this is a lot more work. And I could have just rented out annually, and I would have basically made almost the same amount of money. So when you're considering Airbnb and an annual rental, consider those factors of, am I really getting that much money for all this extra time? Because it's a lot more time. Airbnb, you're going to have to rent it out, you know, once every, what, 12 times a year, you know, and even up to, say, 26 times a year. But with a 12-month rental, you're only renting it out once a year. So it can, it's usually a lot less labor. So you got to figure out, is the money worth it? Normally for me, it wasn't worth it for a long time. Now I just bought that apartment complex and they're all in a great area. So for me, I'm gonna be doing um, probably like eight, eight of them, Airbnb from the beginning. So for me, once I'm, since I'm doing eight, it's now worth it. I don't, compared to just doing one, it wouldn't be worth it for them. All right. West Coast. Westport said, good point on Airbnb. Thanks, buddy. And then Bonilla says, is it good to refi now? Yeah, rates are really, really low. Rates are really, really low. And um, actually, we do have a loan company. So if you're looking to do refinances, DM us, and we can work on getting you a good rate. Because rates are like below four now. So they're very good now. Can you still work a regular job while being a real estate investor? Yes. I worked at the bank. I worked um, for accounting firms. I did a lot of different work for different companies while being a real estate investor. I had 23 apartments and I still worked a corporate job, you know? So I, I it's a lot of work. I didn't have a... Um, Property manager, you know, 
And I also had an accounting firm at the time. I was doing accounting for clients on the side. So at the beginning, it is a lot of labor to take care of your, your rentals. But once you get them rented and you have an annual rental in there, that person stays for like one, two, three, four, five years. And at that point, you usually don't have to do anything. You know, you don't have to like, you know, it's, it's not as hard. You change your AC once every 15 years. You change your roof once every 20 years. You change the water heater once every like eight years. So it's like not a big deal. She said she's at a 5.625% interest rate. So she's still refund? I'm at 5.625. Yeah, for sure. Because rates are almost like, right now, like I got, I quoted myself and I was at like three point. Again, I have a crazy, crazy credit score, really good credit score, really good everything. I got, I'm, I got myself at 3.3625. So that's like two and a half percent less than you. So like, yeah. She says, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a big wow. Yeah. So you could definitely, especially like over a 30 year period, like your mortgage payment can go down like 30%. Like that's a lot. And then possibly, I don't know when you bought your house, one of the things I normally would do, I do cash out refinances. So like, I don't know when you bought your house, but if you bought your house, like say like 10 years ago, you bought it 10 years ago, your house is worth 34, 40% more. You can go to do, let's just say your house is worth, you bought it for 200, you bought it in 2012. That's a good time. So like, Bonilla, how much, how much did you buy your house for? Oh, we are running out of time. Yes, we are. Let's go, Bonilla. I want to rapid fire. I want to rapid fire your answer. So let's just say you bought it for 2012, and let's just say you bought it for 200, 280. So if you bought it for 280, you bought it for 280, um, it's probably worth about like 380, 420 now. We'll say 400. Being a homeowner, if you live in the house, you can do an up to 80% refinance. That means you can, they'll give you a loan for about 320000 on the property. And so 320 you probably owe like 240 back then, or let's say 250 back then, and then uh, you paid it down another twenty. So you could probably do a cash out refinance for like 70, 80,000. You can pull cash out. Cool. So you can pull um, about 70, 80,000 out at a lower interest rate. So now you, have, you owe more money on the house, but the interest rate is so low and it's amortized over 30 years, the payment's still the same. And now you have 70, 80,000. What I do, is I would take that 70, 80,000 and put it in a real estate investment group. Now they're earning you, you're paying 3%, 4% on that loan. The real estate investment group is giving you 8%. It's giving you double the money. Plus you get appreciation on the property value. That's awesome. Or if you want to do it yourself, take that $80,000, put it as a down payment on um, $300,000, $400,000 multi-unit property and you know, do that and collect some money there. So you either you can do it yourself or you can do it with an investment group, but you're gonna still earn way more money than letting the equity sit in your house. You know, you're gonna make 8% usually in an investment group. You're paying 3%, 4% on your home loan. You're gonna make double the money on interest that one way and the crazy appreciation over five to 10 years. So you got a lot of untapped potential there that you can max out. That's what I just did. I just put out like 120,000 out of 180,000 out of one of my properties. Use that money to help uh, buy the million dollar property. So just keep leveling up. Don't quit. Keep leveling up. What is the best way to raise your credit score? To raise your credit score. Join your name to a co signer that's had the credit card for a very long time, and you will then inherit all of their good credit. If you can't find them, and you basically have no credit, get two credit cards. It doesn't matter how small they are, but get two of them. And in six months, your credit score should be a lot higher. So make sure you're always paying them when you get the bill. Pay them off, every single one. Don't buy crazy shit. Just pay them off and keep, keep it moving. Cool. All marble, all, all marble beef. That's gal. I'm late. Yes, you are, bro. Come oh, on. And I got you. Guess what? Good news. We're going to save this video onto our live. 
So you can go to our story and watch it for the next 24 hours. We then, the next day, a couple of days,